Chris Nero from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In this video, we're going to explore a feature called Sync Express that provides data offline and sync capabilities for JavaScript and Cordova applications. And we're going to demonstrate this through an Oracle Jet mobile application today. Viewers familiar with this YouTube channel and the features of MCS will know I've previously covered off a feature set called or known as the Data Offline and Synchronization API inside of MCS, which gives mobile apps the capabilities to fetch remote data when online, which then would automatically be cached, such as the app went offline, the app could continue to function with the cached data. Now, if you're familiar with this feature set, you would know that it was available via the MCS client SDKs for Android, iOS, and Windows only, and that it worked with custom APIs built by MCS only, and that it was an extremely configurable API, giving you control of many options through numerous policies. This configurable nature made it extremely flexible, but also difficult to master thanks to the array of options. Conversely, for the JavaScript and Cordova platforms, we, that is MCS, has something called Sync Express. Sync Express is available in the MCS client SDKs for JavaScript and Cordova only. It is not available for Android, iOS, or Windows. Sync Express takes the completely opposite approach to providing data offline and sync capabilities in that it is not married to MCS on the server side. You can use it to access any remote REST API as long as they are compliant to what Sync Express needs. Though of course, this means you can use MCS's REST custom APIs and Express APIs too. Sync Express is also designed to be extremely simple to use. As such, there are virtually no options. Now, this is where its simplicity comes from. But of course, the trade-off is, is it only works in one way and you have to live with its design. Ultimately, each approach has its pros and cons, and which you choose is up to you. But of course, for this video, we're now going to investigate the Sync Express API, and we're going to do that in much more detail on JavaScript and Cordova. Now, there are a wealth of JavaScript and Cordova platforms out there, and you're free to use any of them. As this is an Oracle video, however, I'm going to demonstrate Sync Express using Oracle's JavaScript Cordova-based Oracle Jet platform. For anyone not familiar with Oracle Jet, I recommend you stop right here and instead go learn about Oracle Jet before continuing this video by following these links. This will give you the necessary information in order to build a Jet application. Next, you'll need to know how to configure an Oracle Jet application to use the MCS JavaScript or Cordova SDKs. And again, we've covered this in a previous article and a video, so please take a chance to review these now too. Right, so now we're in a position to investigate Sync Express in detail. So here we have a pre-built Oracle Jet application that currently does not use Sync Express, but we want to add Sync Express to it so the application can work when it's offline. The app is a simple customer phone book application that fetches customer data from a custom API hosted by MCS. Now as a reminder, Sync Express can connect to any compliant remote REST API. But for the purposes of this video, we're hosting those REST APIs on MCS itself via a custom API. So, after logging into our app, the app calls MCS to retrieve data from MCS, which is served from the following URL. And once fetched, the app displays this in a list view on the screen. In order to fetch this data from the MCS custom API, we have quite a few options in JavaScript from using an AJAX call to access the remote API, to using JET's common model and collection API, and so on, which you use is up to you. Another choice is the MCS client SDK for Android and Cordova provides the custom code invoke custom code JSON request method. So I've arbitrarily chosen to use this method in my application to retrieve the data from MCS. As such, in calling invoke custom code JSON request in our existing application, you can see I've defined the remote endpoints URI, a get HTTP call, a null payload, because gets don't use payloads, and finally a success and failure callback. Then in the success callback, the return data array is fed into a knockout observable called phonebook data source that the list view relies on. Alternatively, if an error occurs when fetching the data, a simple log error message is written. 
Another feature of the app is if we pull to refresh the list view, the data on the screen is updated via another remote call to the MCS customer API. Now, as our customer details don't change that often, refreshing the data wouldn't often result in a change to the list. But in a moment, when we start to refresh the data when the app is online and offline, I really do need some way to show you, from a demonstration perspective, when fresh data is coming down from the server. So to do this, I've hacked the server API and mapped the phone number to the current time in milliseconds and incremented each number by one. As such, each time we undertake a refresh, the server updates all the phone numbers for us. And this proves to us the data is getting updated via the server each refresh, in turn proving our mobile device is currently online. From the perspective of the code that undertakes this refresh of the list view in the J application, again, we see a very similar call to invoke custom code JSON request that we saw earlier. Okay, so overall, we have a very basic app fetching its data remotely from MCS. Now let's watch what happens if we switch the app from online to aeroplane mode, where it can no longer access the remote API provided by MCS. When pulling the list view to refresh, Unsurprisingly, we can see the app can no longer fetch fresh data and just gets, well, stuck. Eventually, this call will time out and the application may crash. Now, obviously, this isn't what we want, or more correctly, this is the user experience our users want. We want the application to continue to run during offline use and preferably default back to showing the previously fetched data rather than crashing. This is where Sync Express comes in. It will give us the offline capabilities with minimal effort. So to set Sync Express up, there are essentially two to optionally three things we need to do to utilize Sync Express in our app. First, we need to copy in the MCS Sync min.js for debug or MCS Sync.js file for production systems into our application. Now for my Jet app, I'll put this under the source.js directory. Next, we need to add to our HTML a script element to load this file. Now, this file must be the first script the app fetches and loads. Now, typically in a Jet app, we would use require.js to load in other JavaScript libraries. But the Sync Express library needs to work at a lower level than that so it can capture all remote HTTP calls. That's why we add it to our main index HTML page as the first script to run so it could subvert all the underlying functionality. Now, if you're building a Cordova application rather than just a plain old JavaScript web application, for Sync Express to work on Cordova, it needs to be able to detect if the network is available or not. To do this, we add the Cordova network plugin to our app. To do this in our Jet app, we CD into the app source code directory, then CD into the hybrid directory and issue the following command, Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin network information. Again, note, it's not necessary to do this for Sync Express if you're just using the JavaScript SDK. However, if you're using Cordova SDK, this is a required step. Now, for most apps, adding the MCS Sync JS library is enough. However, if you specifically have a mobile app that you're building, not a web app, where the mobile app needs to sync a lot of data, you may overflow the local HTML5 Cordova storage on the device and receive a quota exceeded exception. In this case, there is an extra installation step for mobile Cordova developers to implement, not JavaScript or web developers, just Cordova developers. From the SDK directory, you need to also copy over the Loki, L-O-K-I, Cordova FS Adapters.js JavaScript file into your source.js directory. Next, before the script tag to load the MCS Sync.js file, you need to add a script tag to load the Loki Cordova FS adapters.js file. Now, this specific JavaScript file requires you also add a Cordova plugin. You add this via the terminal by first ensuring you're still in the source code hybrid directory, then entering Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin file. Having added this JavaScript file and plugin, at runtime, this will automatically expand the storage of your Jet mobile app. Having added one or both libraries to our web or mobile app, we then need to configure the SDK to understand which remote APIs to cache data from when fetched. Now, this is done through the MCS config options you pass to the SDK when you first initialize it. Here you can see I've already configured MCS config to hit my specific MCS backend. 
Again, for anyone not familiar with all these settings, please refer back to the previous video on how to configure this. Specific to Sync Express, in the MCS config options, we add a new element duly named Sync Express, of which we include under the policies element all the paths we want Sync Express to cache the data from for us when fetched. So as you can see here, I've added from earlier the MCS custom API for fetching phone book data from forward slash mobile forward slash custom slash phone book slash customer and slash customer ID. Note the specific syntax colon customer ID. This implies customer ID is a variable part of the URL path and does change. In addition, the question mark says the customer ID is optional. Finally, the odd syntax in round brackets, double backslash D plus, says the customer ID is a decimal rather than the default string. If it's a string, you can just drop this notation. Overall, for every path you want to cache, you just add a new path entry here. As example, say we wanted to cache a nested resource of department and staff. We could enter mobile custom phone book department colon department ID staff colon staff ID question mark. Alrighty, having configured Sync Express, what do we have to do then to make our code to actually work with Sync Express? Well, exactly nothing. As long as we use the paths in the MCS config we want to cache, under the covers, Sync Express intercepts the calls from invoke custom code JSON request or any other HTTP request and will now automatically cache the data for us when it first returned from the server, as long as the path that we're fetching from exists in the MCS config file. As such, if we go back and restart our app and fetch data from the server, then move the app to airplane mode, which simulates offline mode, and refresh the data again, Rather than getting stuck at the refresh screen as we saw in the earlier demo, simply the call to invoke custom code JSON request returns the previously cached data. Great, job done. Now there's a couple of things I need to make clear. Firstly, if the app has just been installed and has started in airplane mode or is offline, the call to invoke custom code JSON request will always return nothing as it hasn't had a chance to cache any data yet. Second, when the app is online, Calls to invoke custom code JSON requests will always remotely fetch the data and only switching to offline will they start using their local cache until the device returns online whereupon they'll start fetching the data remotely again. And finally, third, while it's very easy to set this all up for your APIs, do think carefully about what data should be cached locally on your mobile app and which data shouldn't. Now, something like phone numbers is a no-brainer. But caching data like, say, a nuclear power station's core reactor temperatures could be a fatal decision if your mobile power station employee thinks they're seeing the latest reactor data, but in fact they're seeing the out-of-date cached copy. As you can see, you don't want to cache all the data. Anyway, I hope you now got a little feel for how Sync Express works. This video has given you the basics to go out and start adding it to your applications. Thanks for joining us in this video. Hope to see you in another video soon.